What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today is May the 4th, which is National Star Wars Day, or I, sh I should just say Universal Star Wars Day. It is uh, Star Wars Day in any country in the world that you are in, in uh, any galaxy, whether it be here or in one far, far away. Now, this past week, something tragic happened, which was Peter Mayhew, who was Chewbacca, the original Chewbacca, he passed away. And a lot of people were commenting on other videos I made saying, why haven't I made a video about Peter Mayhew? And I'm not the type of person that deals with death well. So instead of this turning into a sob fest about me trying to get out sentences about it and how I feel about it, I decided that I would draw Chewbacca and do a time lapse and narration of that. So, without further ado, let's uh, get right into the drawing. Alright, so here I have my canvas or sketchbook, and as you can see, I'm using my Prisma color pencil to just sketch out Chewbacca. You always want to start off with just basic shapes and then as you continue to draw the details are going to add up but again starting with the basic shapes is how every artist usually starts and then you just build up from there i decided since chewbacca is very furry that all i needed was just the rough outline of him and then i would just go in and instantly start inking it so this is going to be a very ink heavy drawing which usually it's just me going over the lines, but a lot of this is going to be made up as I go because Chewbacca's covered in hair. He is a Wookiee. So as you can see, I just kind of, I, I have a reference image of Chewbacca up in front of me and I'm just looking at him and then seeing the lines and the curves of the direction of his fur and then just going with it from there with as natural as I can with my hand motions. Now, I do a lot of the similar strokes when I'm drawing hair because usually with people that have hair, which is I think the majority of people have hair, uh, it's normal for humans to be born with hair or uh, to like have hair throughout their life, uh, your hair grows a certain way. And I know that particularly with women, if you part your hair a certain way, that's going to be the direction that your hair grows in and naturally sits. So the way that they have designed Chewbacca, the way his hair around his face, it goes in a certain direction. Now, this part in the image that I was looking at, it was more dark. So the features on Chewbacca's face were really, uh, there's high contrast in the lighting on his fur. On his face and I think that has to do with making the fact that uh, he has lighter colored eyes he has blue eyes making that stand out and certain features of his face stand out more with the lighting that was in the original reference image I think I went a little too heavy-handed on his brow ridge but I'm able to come back in and fix that when I do color usually I just like to use the color when or the values I should say when I go in and do this but a lot of uh, other artists that go in with just ink they like to have those just black shapes as you can see that I have here. I don't usually do this, but when you are dealing with someone that has darker colored hair, that's usually one of the things that you will do when you're inking it. Now, I'm back in with the Copics. This is warm gray and it is warm gray zero. And so I'm going in with that and I just cover the entire image and then I go in with the darker shades and then try to blend it out. So I believe that is W6 and then 4 and a 2 that I'm going in with and then blending out with. So you always want to go the darkest to lighter shades. And so what I always do with Copics if you want them to blend well is to go and put down that first shade that's kind of the tone and you're going to set the tone for the character or whatever it is that you are coloring. In, or rendering I should say that's the actual uh, proper term for it in the art world is it's not called coloring it's called rendering because you're rendering something into a 3d shape which was originally a flat shape and so with these Copics 
I found that once I set a color and then I go back in and add a little bit more details, especially since these, the brush nibs, they're kind of supposed to emulate a paintbrush because uh, they're soft and you're able to either lay down a lot of ink at once or go in and add points. So you'll see me continuously going over the same spots. That's because the ink, it's going to be drying and blending and I want it to be able to blend out into the other uh, parts of the color flawlessly so you'll see me go over the same spots over and again that's because the ink is not dry so it's going to continuously blend with one another and that way it looks kind of like a seamless look you can see some spots where it gets a little blotchy but because it's wet and I go back in with another color it's able to dry seamlessly which is something that I like and see now I'm going in with a darker color again because it wasn't dark enough the first time and I tend to do this I will put down a color that I think I, I'm not going to go in, you know, with just a straight black first. I'm going to go in with maybe a warm value or like a, a warm value because I'm using a warm grays again with a warm value six or maybe a seven. But I, it's easier to make things darker. It's very, it's almost impossible to make things lighter unless you go back in with white later. And I don't like to do that. So that's why I'll start with a lighter shade and then I'll go back in over dark, even though you're supposed to technically start off with your darkest color. But again, it's easier to go back in later and add it, make it darker. It's almost impossible to make, go back in and make it lighter. So as you can see, I did uh, make a little bit of the shape uh, from Chewbacca's brow bone a little bit too dark. And this is something that I am going to have to come back in and make lighter at the end. And you will see me do that. So it's starting to come alive as Chewbacca. Now, for some reason with this lighting on this paper, it you can see the texture of the paper. You can't see this in real life. I, I don't know if it has to do something with my camera or the angle that it is. And I've tried different lighting. Uh, it just seems to be something that is only picked up when you're recording your drawing as compared to when you're actually seeing it in person. But I think it kind of gives it a nice look. And so I was going to add color to Chewbacca's eyes, but Again, the lighting from the reference image that I see, he only has highlights in his eyes. And I like that idea, so that's why I filled in his eyes with black. And you can see as I'm just going in with this darker value, and I'm adding a little bit of detail. Now, he has a lot of hair, obviously. He's covered in hair. So I'm just going back in now with my pin again and adding a little, a little bit more detail on his face because that is where people usually add all the details in a character's face and that's where all the interest is going to be you're going to be looking at a person's face as compared to you know putting let's put all of the detail on their elbow nobody's going to focus as much on somebody's elbow as they are in a face and so I'm adding in the color on top of the values now Chewie has warm shades of brown around his face and then cooler on the outside of his face and on his arms and Chewie kind of has a transition between brown so he has warm browns and cool browns so you're gonna see me add both of those right now and you can see how I'm going in with a darker shade after I've added the lighter shade and you can see how when it's wet you can really see that color on the ink and as I blend it out with a lighter color you see it less and again I think this has to do with the lighting and the fact that I'm filming this on a camera if you were to see this in person when you see the ink go over and it has that sheen to it that's the way it looks in person as compared to this on camera now I had my lighting different in a previous video and somebody a few people actually left me comments saying that I need to switch up my lighting because the shadow on my hand was covering up the image which I agree with but I feel like the lighting in that sense was better for showing off the true image or at least the true look that the drawings have as compared to this but this one you don't get any shadow so there's just a little experimentation with shadow angles and lighting that I'm going to still have to work with because this is only the second video I've ever filmed of me drawing with Copics and every, everything in life as I have learned is a learning process. Now as I'm watching this and just seeing myself draw Chewy and 
I said before, I don't deal with death easily, and Chewbacca was a huge part of my life in Star Wars, and I mean, that friendship that him and Han shared, and then watching as everyone in the end became his friend, just Luke and Obi-Wan, you know, they were kind of intimidated by Chewie, because I mean, who wouldn't be intimidated by, you know, this over seven foot beast type creature, uh, you know, a Wookiee, but the more you get to know him, you, you know, the more soft of a, he's like a friendly giant and he's, he's your friendly Wookiee and he's always there for you. And he's such a great friend to not just Han, but then later Luke and then Leia. And it's just amazing what somebody can bring to the table when they Tony, you don't even speak the same language. We don't know what Chewbacca's saying. Only Han and, you know, Luke and Leia could interpret what he was saying to us. Now, so I like to add a uh, highlight around it with like a metallic color. So usually I just use, that was a coaster that I got when I was in Hawaii. But uh, sometimes I get like a bowl or a plate and then I outline it and that's how I create these little circles. I was going to go with gold or bronze. Those are kind of my go-to colors. But because of the colors in Chewbacca's fur, I decided to go with silver. And I felt like it was suiting for him because I always do gold or bronze and I never do silver. And in the expanded universe, Chewie was killed by getting crushed by a moon. And so I think that this is, in a way, doing that justice by, you know... I don't like that way of Chewie's death by getting scratched by a moon, and that is not the death that I accept for Chewie, but to me, I feel like I'll always remember Chewie when I look at the moon because it's something that's always there, and it's that comforting presence that you see, and it was always comforting seeing Chewie when he was there because you know that you're safe when you're around Chewie, and you know that he's got your back, and even though he might be like a whining Wookiee sometimes. He's always got your back and he's always going to be there for you and he cares. And that's something that was beautiful about his character and I feel like most people aspire to be like Han and Chewie and it's sad and we're going to miss him. Now I tried to get a better angle of this and you can see the ink is still wet but as you can see it looks a lot different from this angle than it did from the above camera. Well. well everyone I hope you enjoyed watching me draw Chewy. I have him here with me and this is about the size uh, that he is on the can or on the paper I keep wanting to say canvas. Now I know that people are going to ask why I left his belt out and that's because when you rest you, you don't wear your armor. Uh, Chewie is at peace now and I don't think he'd I don't think he'd be wearing that when he's uh, you know gonna I don't think he wears that thing to bed so I don't think he's gonna be wearing that anymore. So, <laughs> I don't mean to be a downer, but, uh, yeah, so there we go. There is our, there is our Chewy. It's a little bit darker than I would have liked, but that's because I usually don't go in that dark with inks. But, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. I will probably draw another one with him and Leia and R2. But, until then, everyone, uh... Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that little bell. And everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your Star Wars day since today is May the 4th. And until next time, may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone, and uh, goodbye to Chewie as well. Hey, everyone, I got a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799-8171. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.